I'm Joyce Hornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Hornady Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Swerzik. Thanks for tuning in on this episode. I'm joined today, a couple great guys, veterans to the show. To my right, marketeer Preston Lentford and across the table, project engineer Ben Searing. Guys, thanks for coming on. How do you do? Great time to be here. It's, it is a great time. And we're talking about uh, a passion, I'm going to call it for all of us, because it's not just our work, but we also do this in our, in our personal lives. And I'll say this much, uh, if you haven't, as the listener, check out episode number 37. You know, this is going a ways back now, but episode 37, we had Ben on and Preston. We listened to their friendly banter. And uh, we talked reloading and we hit it from kind of a higher level of kind of just some different aspects this and different how things to we talk about. like to do the way we like to do things, that yeah. sort of a thing. Yep. Yeah. We learned Preston's way and then we learned a better way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, some would call and it the it right starts. way. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> you, you know, we, all jokes aside, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat as they say. And there are a lot of different ways to reload, and there's not necessarily a right or wrong way for a lot of these processes. Absolutely. Now, there are, there's some events that should have, you know, should happen in front of others, and things that have to happen before others. But largely, um, you know, you're kind of free to find out what works for you. And I think this podcast, what I'd like to focus on is I want to target the listener that's not a reloader and is maybe. Um, you know, there's some bars to entry here, and maybe they're a little apprehensive. Mm-hmm. So let's mm-hmm. talk them through. One, what's the easiest, most efficient way to get set up with the tools to get the job done? And what are those basic steps? Uh, so let's first start on, you know, what do you need? What what do you need to reload? And there, again, there's progressive presses and single stage presses, and there's all these different tools that do similar jobs. Well, let's take it down to a fundamental level. As old Kent Murphy would say, let's break this thing down from a fundamentals standpoint. Well, yep. So the easiest way that we've got laid out here is a classic kit, the lock and load classic kit, and then a couple extra accessories that you're going to need. In between those two things, you'll be set up to load absolutely match accurate ammunition, uh, and you can load pretty darn quick on a single stage. So let's yeah. walk through that. Okay. So I guess... I ordered this classic kit and the extras needed as the bare minimum that you would need to get started reloading. Obviously, there's a lot of extra things. There's other kits. There's different die sets. There's different ways of cleaning. But this is like kind of how I see it as the bare minimum to get started reloading. Yep. And for the viewers, real quick, the line in our table separates everything on this side is the classic kit, just the standard classic kit. And then on that side is the extra accessories closer to Ben there of, uh, of the stuff we ordered. Yeah, I don't know if we just want to walk through everything one by one a, a well, little we'll bit. we'll start with what you have to have for the basics, I think, and then we can tell them this kit has that. Sure. So you can save funds, you know, yeah, absolutely. by buying it together as a kit. So you can piece part it together. You have to have some way to measure powder. You have to have, obviously, components. You have to have a reloading press, dies, and then your recipe book. Yep. All right, so those are the flat basics that you have to have to reload. The cool thing about the kit is we put it all together for you. So there's some cost savings and it's all there. You don't have to go searching around everywhere else uh, to find those individual components. Right. Yeah. And some people might say, well, why, why do I have to buy anything extra at all? Well, just skew wise, um, logistics wise, it, it, we can't, you know, build a kit for every particular cartridge. Correct. There's a different way for pistol reloading and there's a different way for rifle loading. And those are the major deals. If you're only going to reload pistol, this kit probably just about has everything you need other than the pistol metering insert. Am I correct? And rotor, yep. And the rotor. And the dies and the shell hole. But if you're going to load rifle, you're probably going to need to trim at some point. Then yep. you have to add some of those other things. Right. And those other things, there's there's a really basic trimmer. Then there's some high-speed trimmers. That's and right. And then the, you get into trimmers that cost $1,000. This that, can be as simple or as complex yeah. as you want it to be. And it just depends. And as your comfort level grows, you'll see what we talk about here today might be elementary. And then you want to s- step up a little bit to some of those better things. Maybe it makes it easier. Maybe it makes it a bit more accurate. Faster. Things like that faster. Yeah. Um, but this is the basic what you need. and. Still to this day, I use a press just like that for 
all of my accuracy stuff, all of my rifle stuff comes across press like yep. that. Single stage press. So yep. you you buy the classic kit, like you said, Preston. Let's focus on the classic. You open the box, you take the lid off. The first thing is that right here is sitting on the top. You've got yeah. documentation sitting right on the top. So owner's manual for the for the classic press, the powder measure, um, some stickers for you, a little bit of swag, a thank you letter, and then our product catalog will be in there as well. So if you guys aren't familiar with the Hornady catalog, in the very back of it, we've got all of our ammo SKUs as well as it, we can get into the reloading um, dies as well. So we list almost every cartridge in here, what die set uh, you need for it, um, individual SKUs, shell holders that you would need for that, case feeder plates. You know, this is kind of like a Bible within a Bible. Um, and, and if you guys aren't aware of that, uh, the reloading catalog is, a, or the, the Hornady catalog is a great tool to have. You can get it in hardback, give us an email, or online, hornady.com, bottom of the page, support catalog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check that out. And then also in that bundle of uh, documents, you have your instruction manual, you have the warranty registration card. Because, um, you know, anything that we make here in the factory has got a lifetime warranty for uh, material defect and craftsmanship. Um, if you ever have any problems with any of your products, we've got uh, a tech staff ready to help you out. Give us a call 800-338-3220, extension number three. Um, but your registration for warranty is in there as well. So that aside, now let's get into the tools. Yep. So like Ben mentioned, Classic Press still uses it to this day. This is probably the one that I use the most as well. Now, this is your, your I hate to say it, this is your classic O-style press. Right, so completely style. encompassed, yeah. right? Right here, yeah. Now, the difference between ours and competitors, and I'm not trying to make this sound like an ad, but this is something that I, I love dearly, is ours is offset. A lot of them are in line. So mm -hmm. you're reaching around this front post to add your cartridge your case, whatever. Yeah. This one's offset. It's very open. Uh, I can crank out stuff on that really quick. Yep, yes. agreed. Yep, agreed. can't go wrong with that press. Again, built for a lifetime, and it features our lock and load system. Yep. Which so for, we've got three bushings in the classic kit as well. Yep. Now, as you were saying, going to say, sorry to step on your toes there, it's got our lock and load bushing system. So our dies go into the bushing. The bushing can go into the press with an eighth of a turn in and out willy-nilly. Yep. yep. It sets in there, and then when you give it a turn, it's locked into position. The great thing about that is, you know, as you go forward and you set your dies, this is the press you use. When you're done with the die, you pop that back out of there. It goes in your die box. Next time you come back to reloading, pop it in there. Your die still set. It's set. Set for life. That's super yep. handy. And, you know, growing up, uh, you know, the old man had a, a classic uh, press very similar to this uh, without the lock and load bushing system. And the thread tenon on a sizing die or a seating die, you might be threading in an inch worth of threads into that press. And, at 14 threads per inch. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, it's it's a lot of spinning to get that thing in there. You throw it in a lock of load bushing, pop, pop, it's in and out. It is, and a lot of times when you adjust one of those dies with a split lock ring or another sort of a lock ring for your headspace or for how you want it to hit on the shell holder, um, you, you almost have to loosen that lock ring to get it to unthread. Oh, yeah. So then you've changed your setting. It. You can't just pop it back down there on the press and be still set. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, good point. So you've got the press, again, a, yep. a lifetime of reloading. Uh, whether you get into super high-volume pistol loading, you will never regret starting with a single-stage press. Absolutely. Easiest Absolutely. to use, and they're built for a lifetime. You can build some really awesome ammo on that. Yep. Um, probably secondary as to importance, in my opinion, that comes with this this kit is the Hornady Handbook of Cartridge Reloading. The so 11th edition. With every uh, introductory press kit comes the Hornady Handbook. Uh, all your loads are in there. The first 100 pages have excellent information on actually what happens during a firing event. Yeah. Um, I would almost say that face. that's probably the first. If you've never loaded before, open that box up, get your warranty registration going, grab that book and read the first read couple hundred pages. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's got, like you said, it takes you through the sequence of that firing event and what happens to the cartridge case and the bullet and all that. Yep. Uh, and then it also walks you through step by step how to reload. Yep. So yep. if you're new to it, there's a ton of information out there now, but that the yeah, first hundred pages has quite a bit of it. And I will throw out there as well, uh, there's a Hornady Tech Tip playlist on YouTube. All right. A very young Seth Swerzik. Very yeah. young. With 
what what a incredible beard at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Walks you through how to set up all the dies. Yeah. So that's that's rifle dies, uh, pistol dies, uh, size dies, taper crimp dies. You know, just the the whole nine yards. Yep. Um, so that's on there. Those have been very useful because you can actually see it get done. Right. Um, other equipment that we have in the kit is a scale. Obviously, that's hugely important. If you yeah. don't know how much powder you're putting into things, that's dangerously yeah. crazy. Yeah. Dangerously crazy. So that cookbook in there is going to have all your recipes on what we've actually pressure, pressure tested and verified the pressure on. So as long as you're within those lateral limits, you're going to be fine. And uh, you got to have a scale to do that. And there's a bunch of different scales on the market. Right. Balance beams, digital, um, pocket scales like the one that's included in the kit, all the way up to $1,000 jeweler scales. Um, yes. A lot of stops in between, but you got to have a scale and you got to have a way to dispense the powder. Yep. And this one actually is trickle compatible, which is awesome uh, yep. because there's actually a trickler in this kit. Yeah. Um, very small, very basic, but it, it certainly gets the job done. Um, another way to throw powder is our powder measure and that comes with the kit as well yep now it's set up with a rifle rotor and insert Mm -hmm. so approximately 17 to 100 grains of powder depending on the powder you'll be able to throw out of the box Mm -hmm. Um, a couple different inserts for as far as your case mouth size smaller guys here bigger guys here and then we also have this uh, mounting bracket so you're not left. In, you're not left in the dark. Add a couple screws to the kit. Bing, bang, boob. You're throwing powder. Yep. Let me see that powder measure over there. Oh, powder it's even measure. handier if you use that bracket and attach. Press here. I've got a shelf here with my powder here. Boom. Yeah, that's, that's how throwing. I've always yep. set it up. Yeah, yep. high level. Yep. So yeah, uh, for the viewers out there, the powder measure. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Like you said, Preston, we've got this mating surface here. So some people will put their cartridge. Uh, right up there, charge the handle, and they'll drop the powder and dispense Correct. it directly into their cartridge case. Otherwise, yep. you can dump it into the pan and weigh it. Boom. Um, this is the metering insert that we were talking about that's adjustable, um, like you said, depending on the powder type. And then these things come out. So depress the lever, pop that baby out. You can buy extras of these to keep them preset. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is also what will change when you swap from pistol to rifle is this whole charging rotor assembly and that metering insert but super handy again you could dump it right into the pan to uh, to adjust your powder charge get it where you want it and then you can dispense right to the case mouth if you prefer or dump it in the pan weigh it put it in your cartridge case and you can trickle up to that last little yeah there's several ways like you said you can just that would be what you'd call volumetric Mm -hmm. you know we set the grain weight with a scale to start with a volume of powder if we like that volume the consistency is good with our load we don't necessarily have to weigh every charge. Rifle accuracy, real match stuff, I weigh every charge. So depends on how you want to use it. One tip I'll give you on that is be consistent with the handle. Yeah, if you're going to operate that, the speed you operate it, you know, I do a double tap up, one down, because the up is the dump cycle. You know, just however you decide to do it, you have to be consistent. Otherwise, it'll throw different weights. Yep. for you absolutely one yeah. tap versus two taps that'll, sure. that'll that'll definitely be different now you you mentioned you know you're going to hand weigh every one of them for rifle for yeah. rifle for match accuracy i will just throw in the caveat everyone has to figure out what works for them that's yeah. right absolutely you don't have to hand weigh everything what we're finding nowadays with powder technology and kind of like Jaden's ballistic series sample and and you know what it actually takes to get a measurable difference on a cartridge case, I'm using the powder measure more and more yeah. and more. I'll yeah. agree. And I also think that chamber design has a lot to do with that. Some of yep. the new chamber designs with a little tighter throat. Yeah. I think it's less important here. Um, obviously I'm going to get technical, but you know, you want that extreme variance and to be as little as you can. And we're finding that it matters less volumetrically with the kind of powder that you use. You're finding that yeah. to be good. Yeah. Not to get off on the side. Yeah, there. let's let's get yeah. crazy. So moving Sorry. on through the tools that come in that classic kit. Hornady one shot uh, case lube. Yep, fairly self explanatory. Yeah, awesome stuff. Well, and, and not necessarily self explanatory. So if you're okay. new to reloading, if you're going uh, a cartridge case, when you fire it, swells to to meet the dimensions of the chamber. Correct. And then it it comes back down. It contracts, but it never contracts. 
not never, usually doesn't contract all the way down to where it started. So you have to resize that case. And on a shouldered case uh, with a die that's made of tool steel, if you don't lubricate the case and you run it up in there to size it, it's not coming out. Right. You have to lubricate those cases. Uh, And we have this aerosol. May I tell you what? If used properly, that is the stuff. It's great. It's great. I like to lay my cases on a rag. Lay them all out mouth towards me because this stuff doesn't hurt your powder or your primer right. pockets. Mm-hmm. And I give them a spray that does two things. It gives my cases covered and a little bit gets in that neck. So when I see the bullet, then I just kind of roll them all with my hand and hit it one yep. more time. And that's good. It's a good way to do it. Don't forget to shake that can. Shake the bejesus shake the out can. of it. Yes, because the, the carrier is stick em. I promise you, if you forget to shake the can, you'll stick your first case. Yeah. So shake the can up, get it. Get it yeah. all mixed Store up. Store it upside down. Great stuff. Also, yeah. wait 60 seconds after you spray it Yep. for the propellant to, to evaporate. evaporate. To dry, yep. yes. Yeah, yeah. I like Otherwise to stand mine on the case stuff. head facing up, and then I'll come down at a 45-degree angle, spray one side, spray the other side. You get lube from the case mouth, inside the case mouth, all the way down to the rim. Yep. You give it that 60 to 90 seconds to evaporate, and that is the most convenient case lube on the market. That's hands right. Down. So moving on from the case lube. Uh, we'll go to a reloading tray. Yeah. Got to have a loading block here. Got to yep. have that where you're standing them up to do your spraying. Yep. yep. Or you're literally doing one thing at a time, but this allows you to do multiple things at a time or multiple cases at a time. Yep. Uh, these all hold, these hold 50. Yep. Now these will do 223, uh, standard 308 size cases. And on the other side, we've got magnum, magnum cases. So 532 case heads on that. Yep. Um, also kind of goes with that is the powder funnel. Mm-hmm. If for getting that powder into the cartridge If case. you're weighing off of this and going into the case, you need a funnel to get it in there. Otherwise, you're going to have a heck of a time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you take the funnel, set it right on the case head or the case mouth. Pour the dump powder. the powder. And it yep, pours right in there nice and smooth. That way you never never lose a drop. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We'll move on. Lock and load bushings. The classic kit itself. Uh, just the classic kit, not the deluxe, not anything else. It comes with three lock and load bushings. Perfect. Just enough so to get you started. Get you yep. started. Or if you're on a shoestring budget, you know, you can leave one in the press and, and move yeah. dies. Yeah, you could. You, you can know. do it You'll either find way you want to do it. It's so convenient that it grossly goes over the cost of those yeah. bushings. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Just get the good um, bushings for every die you need. Uh, chamfer and deburring tool. Yeah. Very, very important uh, on your rifle cases. Um, we're not typically flaring rifle cases so your flare essentially is an inside chamfer yep um and it, it's and super it removes critical. the deburr after trimming yep. that can cause a problem because if you see the bullet with that burr in there it'll roll the board burr down inside that neck and it could make the neck too big to even chamber yep that yep. could definitely all be sorts a problem of issues so you. The, yep. you need to chamfer and deburr uh, your rifle cases for absolutely sure. absolutely um we're, we'll move on to uh, we have a hand priming tool in here yeah, the handheld priming tool, if you're a volume loader, you know, you're doing 9 millimeters or 223s, or, or if you just find this really ergonomic, yep. handheld priming tool, uh, throw your shell holder in there um, that you'll need with for your reloading press, and fill your tray with primers, and go to priming. Yep. Uh, it does actually come with an RCBS tray, a green one, um, so if you have their shell holders, for whatever reason, I wouldn't understand that. Yeah. Uh, but we got the black one on here. That's the Hornady shell holder tray. It's yep. because the diameters in their shell holders are smaller on that through hole. Ours are different. Yep. yep. Uh-huh. So there's actually two ways you could prime with this kit. Yeah. So in the press right now is a, a priming arm. Right. Hold that up for the camera, Ben. Yep. Now it's set up for large uh, primers as it comes. Now it does have the pieces for small primer as well. And here's where my hack that we talked about pre-show comes in. Yeah. If cost is of no issue to you and you are going to do both large and small, I would give a call to Hornady and say, I'd like to buy another priming arm. Order this piece right here. That way you just have both ready to go. You set right up out of the box. They're easy to come out. It's got a hex head on the primer pin itself. You push, hold that back, stick your... I don't even know the size. Do you know the size off the top of my head? I I just use my finger. Yeah. There's a size for a, for a nut driver if you want. So unscrew it out, put the other one on, you're good. But I do, that's a, that's one of the best tips I've probably ever heard Preston say. (laughs) High praise. (laughs) Is get another one of these. Don't, don't, don't waste your time. They're inexpensive. Um, and to have one where you, you see how easy I pop that in and out 
you know, you can drop it in there just like that. And if he, if you had another one, you pull that out, you put the other one in. Yep. I even bought one without an arm and I use it when I'm just depriming cases. So sure. it kicks the primer pockets out. Yep. yep. Easy. So many. Side note, if you are uh, doing a function on the press that primers are coming out of your cases, you must have a priming arm in this press. Yeah. For That's them to go point. into the spent yep. primer. Deflect catcher. and they roll right Otherwise, down. they come out the front or stick down. There's a pin through the press that that little hook hooks on. Yep. Um, they could stick behind that pin. The next time you put an arm in, you'd be like, what's going on? Why can't I yeah. get it in there? And I will say this from a, from a relatively experienced reloader here. I love to prime on the press over virtually any other method. Uh, it's, it, way, it's, I feel I have way more control, way more consistent uh, primer depth. And uh, for me, I like to prime right on the press. Feel is better. I don't, and the hand tool lets me break my number one rule of pay attention to what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm too tempted to go grab a bag of cases and some primers and sit there in front of the TV, you know? Yeah. It's, it's not, I, I like here, prime, Yep, really good. And, and, you know, there can be a flow if, if you decide, I know we're going to talk about the steps in a little bit, but if we decide our 45 auto for the first iron doesn't need primer pockets clean and the brass doesn't need to be cleaned it's clean you know we pleased it well we shot it on a tarp whatever the situation may be i can full length size that and as that primer sticking down it's knocked the one primer out i can set a primer in there and come right back in and size it so yep. i'm full length sizing and priming in one step yep just creates a really nice work absolutely i don't have to do another step yeah so that is the that's the kit that is the reloading kit the classic Let, kit i think we should pretend now since we're set up for large uh for for rifle let's pretend like we're just doing rifle and then let's get into the extras that you will need okay to complete the process with rifle so All start right. with the dies i suppose well number one obviously for whatever rifle you're going to reload we've chosen 223 remington you have to have a die set all right we've got a complete line of die sets as preston said in the book they're all in there you can find them online you can call us and we'll tell you the item number to find most of you know any of your dot coms, your local stores, you'd be able to find them. Mm-hmm. Um, great die sets. Of course, I take a lot of pride in them because that's what I've done primarily yeah. for 17 yeah. years. Quick tangent here. If, yeah. you, if you have a cartridge that we don't have dies for, Ben's your man. Ben can make them. We can design them and yep. get them made. Custom you shop. Bet. So we'll so actually you, just set them out here. So you got to have a die set, okay? Yep. Rifle and, dies. If you're going to reload rifle, as Preston, Preston, Seth talked about earlier, as he talked about earlier, okay, when you fire a case under pressure, it swells to the chamber. Brass always likes to go home, so it springs back just a little bit. That allows you to open the bolt or the, the action to cycle and let the case come out. If And you can do this test yourself. Try to put a bullet back in the case without doing anything. Most of the time, it's just going to fall in because everything is opened up. Right. You need a die set to squeeze that back in. Okay. As we talked about, you lube that case, you get it squeezed back in. And... For some reason with rifle cases, and I don't know if it's just pressure or how it goes, but brass seems to flow, mm-hmm. okay? So usually on your first firing, you fire a new factory brass because it has to go so far because most factory brass, well, all, excuse me, all factory brass has to fit in a Sammy min spec chamber. There's tolerances on everything, and you might have a chamber that's not min spec, so your brass moves a little further. You have to squeeze it back down to fit back in that Sammy min spec. The brass tends to grow. So longer. Too too long, yes. Mm-hmm. So then you have to be able to trim the brass. One of the simplest ways to do it, we sell a trimmer, very handy. Um, you put the same shell holder you would have to have. I should say you gotta have a shell holder so you figure out what shell holder is from that list. Yep. You can put the same shell holder right in here. Um, your brass will clamp right there. You can set your depth here with the pilots that come with the kit for the right uh, caliber of bullet. And you set this to trim to your trim to length. That's from your Bible. Your yep. Bible will tell so, you yeah, hand me where that, that's at. That manual quick tangent here. Uh, yep. But like you said, so, you know, if we were loading a 223, 11th edition manual page 165, there's always a, uh, a I'm going to call it like a welcome page has a description of the cartridge and it has all your lengths, your trim to lengths, Absolutely. your maximum COL has all those on yep. there. So, and, and, you know, you may have a rifle that on the first firing, it doesn't grow too long. As long as it's within, you know, your max length and your trim to length, you're probably okay. Yep. I like to personally trim them all the first time so that I know that they're all trimmed to the same length. Uniformity. At the start for uniformity. Yes. Yep. Very simple tool. 
I believe you can even, if you want to upstep it just a little bit, you're tired of cranking the handle, you know. I believe we sell a drill attachment here. You we can do. put a drill on there and yep. slam it forward. Power and, adapter. Uh, yep. Just power adapt it. Cut take your it tape easy. to lake. So um, that's an important part. Uh, so for tool-wise, you, if you're going to be trimming cases, measuring lengths, measuring cases, uh, it's imperative that you have a good set of dial calipers or digital yep. or calipers. Digital, digital calipers, whatever you choose. Uh, they have to be accurate to a thousandth. Yep. Um, so that with the min and max that we talked mm-hmm. about in the book, we're able to determine where that case is at and where we need to trim it to to set up the trimmer. Right. Yeah. You'll never yeah. go wrong with a set of dial calipers, uh, digital calipers, if you prefer, like Ben said, accurate to within a thou because you'll be measuring and you need to know within a thou, uh, whether that's a diameter or a length, got to have a set of dial calipers. We offer both a digital and a dial set. Uh, that are, those are great tools to get you started. Sky's yep. the limit. Meet the Toyo, stare it. For, it you know, yeah, get trim it. length, flare diameter, bullet diameter, and seating length. Yep. You're, you're, you're going to need a caliper. I prefer the dial myself. I don't know about it. I like a dial too. I'm I not a too. fan of the fan of the digitals. I just feel like digital fails me. I feel like... Uh, Some things I'm old school about. <laughs> I I'm surprised. I learned <laughs> how to read dial calipers before I knew digital calipers yeah. existed. And then when I got a, a digital caliper like i ne- like i have to say the number out loud at, to make it like register i don't know yeah. it's kind of a weird thing it's whatever you prefer honestly um digitals make it easy they just tell yes, you the number do. and if you're gonna no this is basic but if you're gonna step it up and you don't even have to do math with them you can zero them and then measure yeah. again oh, yeah. and say oh well there's my difference i don't have to do the math yep gotta have a set of calipers yep gotta have them for your shell holder obviously that that information's in our uh, catalog for which one you need, but if you get your die set, it's actually printed right on the die set. What yep. shell holder? A lot you of need. times it'll say it right down there. Shell holder yep. number sixteen, uh, and these these just snap into your press. Yep. Um, if you already have a shell holder, as he said, from other manufacturers, they'll snap into our press too. However, it has to be a Hornady shell holder to work for our trimmer. trimmer because our trimmer, this pilot piece that holds the shell in, is designed around the diameter of our shell holders yeah and that okay. pin has to be big enough to not collapse into the primer pocket primer so that's pocket the, yes that's exactly that that's diameter. why it's designed that way mm-hmm. um so from there i would suppose another optional accessory and it, it's this is not a have to i would say that this is probably a have to if you're going to load rifle you have to have this unless you have old yeah. school file type or trim dies revolver or you, cartridge correct or you Give me a call and, and I build you a file type trim die where you use a file, but we're, we're getting a little bit more. We'll stick to the basics. We'll stick to the yeah, basics. Yeah. You got to have one of these, okay? Cleaning. You can clean them with a rag if you want to. You can wipe one them by off with one. A rag. Yeah. One by one. But one of, the, one of a better deal is some sort of an upgraded cleaning system. Yeah. You never want to work with dirty brass. It'll scratch your sizing die. That's right. Scratch your chamber Could up. Could ruin it. That's right. A piece of sand on there it gets in your chamber, you've got a mess. Yep. So. You can use a vibratory cumbler to get your brass clean. This is not my preferred method, but it's a great method, and it's a good way to get started. There's other way I started. That's right. And it's an inexpensive way. I think we all started this way. This was Mm -hmm. par for the course. Yeah. Yeah. You never heard about sonic cleaning, and now I've moved on from sonic cleaning to rotary tumbling with with the pins. pins, That's right. That's right. So So, suffice it to say, if you're doing rifle, well, if you're doing any any cartridge. If you're reloading. If you're reloading, you need a way to clean cases. Yep. Yes, and absolutely. The, the media tumbler, this one is corn cob media. That's right. You pour your cases in there. Depending on what you're, you're reloading, you could fit 50, 100, 200 cases in there. For you sure. You fire that baby up for two, three, four, five hours, whatever. Forget about it. And you come back and you're, you can, your brass is now a mirror. You yep. can see yourself in it. Yep. So you have to have one never want to work with dirty brass and you know a, a corn cob media uh from ours or anybody else's great entry level way to get yep. clean brass in large volume because like you said ben nobody wants to get brasso and clean them with a rag yeah nobody does nobody does and and you can get polishing stuff for this put it in there we sell that mm-hmm. uh there's probably more aggressive medias out there if you got really dirty cases i've seen yeah, walnut brass. shell media and stuff so tons of options and there's tons of options a way to clean we brought this one along so that we could show you guys yeah, or kind of tell you guys level. about entry level. A lot of guys have these or they're familiar with that. They're inexpensive. This is how it goes. Yep, absolutely inexpensive. Turn them on, let them rip. Awesome. Anything else on the tool side of it before we get into process? As far uh, as well, rifle. Let's, let's move over oh, to pistol. Let's bust over to pistol. Sorry, I yeah. forgot about the so, pistol guys. Yeah. So bare minimum, if you're only going to reload pistol, you're going to need the die set. 
for the pistol cartridge you're reloading, all yep. right? If you've already got the kit, you're going to need the shell holder. Again, look it up in the catalog. It's on the front of the dies. Grab the shell holder. Now, you don't necessarily have to have a shell holder for every cartridge you load, okay. right? Unless you want to keep one in the die box with it. Right. Because the, the shell holders, like, let's just pick a number one. Mm-hmm. How many cartridge cases does that do, guys? Oh 15, gosh. 20, 223, 308. I mean, there's a ton of cartridge cases it'll do. So look on the box. If you've already got one in inventory, you don't need to get another shell holder. But right. for brand new, you're going to need a shell holder for your pistol cartridge. You're also going to need, if you want to do um, the primer, uh, excuse me, the powder measure, you're going to need to get a pistol meter insert. Very simple to swap out. Again, they're exchangeable. You can get extras of these to keep your cartridge set of the of the adjuster, and it'll go right into that. Um, what is the range on these? Do you know? Zero to 17. Zero to 17 grains. Typically, pistols, not typically, but most of the time, pistols take far less powder, and the powder's a different kind of powder. Mm-hmm. This has a very small metering chamber. hole yeah. chamber volumetrically to, to get the smaller grains of powder in there. If you tried to do it on, on a rifle one, it would be very difficult to be consistent. Right. Yep. Okay. So you have to have that. Another thing you may consider adding the standard die set for this. We do sell others, but very basic with cartridges that head space off the mouth. All right. You'll learn that in reloading handbook because they don't have a rim. They don't have a shoulder. Something has to hold them in the chamber, and it's the mouth. So you can't do the traditional crimping if you're going to start talking about crimping with rifles where a bullet has a cantaloupe. You're going to need a taper crimp die. Mm -hmm. You're going to need a way to be able to crimp the bullet in the case if it needs to be, but maintain something there for the mouth to interact with the chamber. Okay? So taper crimp die would probably be the next bare minimum. If you happen to get the set that's the taper crimp die set, you can kind of do the Satan and taper crimping in one. That's right, at the same time. It's a little bit more advanced to adjust that. So if you're just starting out, you find this die set, get a taper crimp dry, and and you're going to do everything in steps with a single-stage press. I think think you get a a little bit better taper crimp when you do it on its own. Yeah, When you do it separate. Which is why... And I know a lot of guys do get the taper crimp die set. They seat in one op, reset it, and seat and do the crimping in the next. So uh, I guess the reason I I did it this way is we're loading on a single stage already. Absolutely. We're not strapped for space. Let's just... Get a nice, healthy taper crimp on. I agree. Yep. And again, that taper crimp, you know, uh, a the other crimp is a roll crimp. And Correct. that takes the case mouth and physically rolls the, the mouth into the bullet. Yep. And if your bullet's got a cantaloupe, you can roll it in there and get an aggressive bite. And that's great for um, AR-15 type cartridges where you've got that, you know, that inertia going forward, yeah, slamming that cartridge Heavy recoiling home. stuff. Yeah. Heavy recoil like a, a revolver cartridge you'd want to roll crimp. Now, the taper crimp is for those pistol cartridges that don't have a cantaloupe, like 9 millimeter. the bullets typically don't have cantaloupe. You headspace off the mouth. You still want to put some extra grip on that bullet because it's still an auto-loading gun. Yeah. Uh, so you just have to squeeze, essentially, the mouth to the bullet instead of physically roll it in there. Yeah, in engineering terms, is the difference between a 30-degree included angle, where that brass hits that 30-degree angle and comes in, and probably a 4-degree included angle, or 8-degree yep. included angle, 4 per side. So... It just more or less squeezes it. It doesn't try to take the mouth and swing it way in. General rule of thumb is if it's if the bullet has a cannula, that little grooved mark on there, you can use the standard dies, seating dies, to put a crimp on them because they all feature that crimp, the roll crimp. Mm -hmm. If they don't have a cannula, you cannot really use that kind of crimp. You have to use some sort of a taper crimp yep. method. It'll to, eventually just kind of bulge the neck out. Exactly. It'll bulge it or it'll it'll be problems down the road, but we don't want to scare you off with this. Yeah. You know, use the basics, get one loaded up and fire it, and you'll be so relieved and so happy that you've picked up another hobby. And Yeah. I used to tell people that doing this would, you know, save you money, but I don't ever think you want to give that money back to your significant other for the budget. So it just allows you to shoot more. You shoot more yeah. for the same money. That's right, for the same money. Yeah, and that's awesome. And we'll talk more about crimp and applying that crimp and whether you need a crimp at all Absolutely. on some things as we yeah. get into that. These are just the basic tools processes. that you would need to kind of get started. All right, so from the Lock and Load Classic Kit and a few of those accessories, just between those two purchases there, you've got the kit, you've got everything that you need in there, and then on the accessory end, you've got a trimmer to trim your cases, 
You've got your dies in your shell holders. If you're yep. a pistol loader, you're going to need that pistol metering insert and rotor. And then a way to clean those cartridge cases. That's the bare bones that will get you loading today. Yep. Is there anything else on, on, the, on the tool side of it? Yes. What? I, I, we're going to start talking about process here. I think a necessity, and some people might not, is a decapping die. Okay. I think it ought to be in your repertoire. We talked about cleaning brass. Well, when you do that process, I like to have the primers out of the way so that I don't have to uh, clean that carbon out of the primer pockets later. Might as well take advantage of whatever I'm going to do to clean to perhaps clean the primer pocket. That's fair Get enough. that primer out of the way yep. before I do my cleaning. And I will say, I have no problems with having a decapping die. I use it frequently. Don't let Ben's confidence scare you away into thinking you have to do that's that true and you because have to clean without primers in so our I sizing agree. dies your run your, your sizing die that comes in the box will resize the brass and deprime it right yes absolutely well, we we said you don't want to size dirty brass so if you want to clean and have an empty primer pocket you need a universal depriming die which will not touch the, sh the the actual cartridge case but actually just punch the primer out now you've got an empty primer pocket you can clean your brass and then go into the sizing. So, uh, like you said, Ben, a universal decapping die might be something else to consider Absolutely. in your in your tools lineup. Well, with that, I think we'll pause right here for a quick commercial break and then jump right back into the processes. Look at this. A hundred free bullets when I buy these select Hornady reloading tools. Wow, 500 free bullets with certain Hornady reloading presses and kits. Well, what do they have? Let's get loaded. There's no better time to stock your reloading bench. Choose from the most durable, precise, and convenient tools on the market and receive free bullets to get you loaded. Visit Hornady.com for further details. Next time we get loaded, I'm buying. All right, so those tools aside, we've got our basic tools to get started. Let's start talking about processes. Now, this is... You know, there's some nuance to it because not all these processes have to happen in a certain order and not all of them happen individually. Some of them happen at the same time. But as a basic, let's get into the, the cleaning and the depriming and, the, and, and that, again, we talked about it here a few minutes ago where Ben always likes to deprime and then clean. And I'm sort of the opposite depending on what I'm doing. Sometimes I'll just get the cases cleaned. I've never ran into any measurable thing where I was like, oh, wow, I should have cleaned my primer pockets. That just never happened. Uh, Amen, so, brother. Yeah, so for the most part, let's say uh, you don't have a universal decapping die because we've got our just our basic tools. Just have these tools. Right. So step numero uno, you get your brass, it's fired, you got to get it clean. Absolutely. And we talked here about our corn cob media tumbler, great way, stainless steel pins, Man, you want to talk about clean brass in a oh, darn yeah. hurry. Sonic cleaning, another great way, individually with a rag. Yep. But step number one, you got to have Get clean brass. Get your brass cleaned up. Get yep, your you brass cleaned up. Won't regret it. And from there, we'll go into the depriming, which happens at the same time as your resizing die. Absolutely. And so that resizing die comes in the kit. There's instructions on how to get that set up properly. Comes in the die kit. Die set. Die yes. set, yes. So you thread it into your lock and load bushing. And again, there's YouTube videos out there. There's uh, yeah, a much younger me walking you through that setup. And there's a bunch of others out there. Very simple to set up a sizing die to get that decapping pin set correctly. Lubricate the case. Run it up. Now you've got a deprimed cartridge case. And it's properly sized. And if it's properly lubricated, it's going to come right back out. And Ben, like you mentioned, you like to prime at that point, right? Absolutely, absolutely. That you know that with a single stage press, that little arm is kicked out right towards me, just looking me right in the face. I might as well set my primer right in there. When I come back down and pull that case out of that die, I put a new primer right in the case. And that's a lot of processes, kind of all in one. You get your clean brass, and then you're going to resize it, deprime it, and reprime it right. in just a quick stroke of the handle. Yeah, absolutely. And if, and if you're somebody that's nervous about this. You know, maybe don't do that. Yeah. Maybe oh, yeah. just maybe take just your time. Do it do each, it, step, each at step at a time. At time. You yep. can do it that way or you can do it singly. Like I said, you know, we talked about the depriming. You can deprime it all first and then clean it all first or you can clean it all first. 
full length size it and deprime it. Yep. You well, know. so our next and step then prime here, it later. Our next step here, uh, at least for me, so after I get a full length resize, yep. particularly on a rifle case or on a revolver case, that's when I'm going to trim. I like to trim after I resize. You have to trim after you resize. Right. Because that's where you'll realize that the cartridge case grew, grew in right. length. Yep. So you trim. I don't like to do a single operation except for bullet seating with a primed case. So for me, I will resize, deprime, then go to trim before I prime. Yeah. So and there, that, there's a lot of ways to skin this cat. Like I said, there's plenty of there nuance really there. Absolutely. Um, and again, it, you can do what, what you want because you're your own keeper. But for me... Like I said, the only operation I'm going to do with a primed case is put powder in it and put a bullet on it. I don't like, I'm not going to go to a trimmer with a primed case. Yeah, right. Um, so maybe if that's a, just kind of a, a loose rule uh, to take away, especially as a beginning reloader. Yeah, as a beginning, re- and, and I should reiterate, that's when I know that the cases aren't too long, that I can prime them at that stage. I also, or they're a case that I know doesn't need to be trimmed like a 45 auto or yep, a right. 9 millimeter. Then I can take advantage of priming at that time. I should, you know, probably say that. Yep. But yes, trimming for rifle would be the next logical step. Yep. Because again, you, you those things will grow, and there will become a point where it will cause either chamber interference or you could spike your pressures up a little bit because that you you cam that bolt down on a bolt action. You have like an infinite amount of of leverage. And that brass that you just crammed into the front of the chamber has to go somewhere. That's and right. And that could, you know. Put more pressure on your bullet. It's an yep. F, it's causing a crimp. Right. So uh, another important step here, uh, you trim the case, uh, which is obviously vital, but it yep. leaves a burr around the case mouth. You got to get rid of Internal and external. Good point. Both in- ways. Okay. So with the kit, we got the chamfer and deburr tool. There's other tools. This one is the, the basic. Yep, yep. Hardened tool steel here. You got an inside chamfer, outside chamfer, and uh, it'll knock that burr yep. off just a quick twist. Take it in there, twist, twist outside, done. Done. Yep. Perfect. Simple as that. Now, Hornady offers Sub X component bullets from 308 up to 458. The Sub X features a lead core and is designed to provide deep penetration and high weight retention at reduced velocities. The patented flex tip combined with long grooves in the gilding metal jacket ensure excellent expansion at velocities down to 900 feet per second, delivering big results without the big bang. Sub X bullets from Hornady. We've got clean brass. It's deprimed, it's trimmed, it's sized, everything's good to go there. Uh, at this point, if you were reloading pistols, there's a step that is known as flaring. Right. And with a rifle cartridge, a, a bottleneck rifle cartridge, it's not necessary for a straight wall cartridge, which would include some of your your rifle cartridges, the 450 yeah. Bushmaster, the 350 Legend, but then 4570. All, yeah, 4570, and then all of your pistol cartridges, they go through another process known as flaring. And that flaring die is a separate die and it is included in your pistol die set. Correct. It's a it's a separate die with basically a cone in there, for lack of a yeah, better term. Yeah, it's got a radius that leads in, goes up to a straight portion that we want at the diameter for bullet tension, mm-hmm. and then the, it ends with an angle so that you can flare the mouth of your case, because many pistol bullets are very flat on the bottom, very square. They don't have boat tails or nice radiuses. Mm-hmm. So you need that to be able to get your pistol uh, projectile started straight. Okay. So, so you, you put don't a little bit of flare crooked. on it. Rule of thumb on flare, only as much as you need, because you have to take that flare back out, or it won't chamber for you. Yep. So as much as you need, I I haven't loaded pistol in a long time. I want to say it was like 20 thou over bullet, something in that neck of the woods. Yeah. Uh, Probably pretty close. Sometimes you can get away with less, depending on your projectile choice. Yep. As a caveat, the 147 grain XTP from Hornady, right? Nine millimeter. Has a bow tail. Has a bow tail. Don't even need to use it. Don't even need a flare. But if you are reloading for, for a pistol cartridge or a straight wall rifle cartridge, at this point, that's when you're going to put your flare on. And again, right. separate die goes right in your press, stroke of the handle, done. Takes right. no time. You don't have to re-lubricate or anything. You don't have to lube anything. You can just run it up in there. Put a nice little flare on there. Again, my rule of thumb was uh, bullet diameter plus 20. So if a bullet was 355, I'd flare to 370 to 375 in that neck of the woods. Um, 
uh, on the outside I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember my cheat sheet from when I was in tech. Yeah. You know, I never, believe it or not, and I should be the nerdy engineer type, I never measured it. I flared it, took my bullet, and I looked at it. <laughs> I was like, did it clear? Nope, just a little bit more. All right, this is perfect. Yep. Yeah. All right, so you've got uh, your rifle cartridge trimmed to length, or if you've got your primer, or excuse me, your pistol cartridge, it's the appropriate length, and you've got your right. flare. Now it's time to get your powder into the cartridge case. Now, you pick a recipe out of the handbook. Now, for the novice, this is your first cartridge you've ever reloaded. You know, not getting into any load development or anything like that. Open up the cookbook, find the bullet, find the cartridge that you're loading. Just pick a modest charge weight with the propellants that you have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always recommend at least 10% off of maximum. If you take the maximum load listed, reduce it by 10%. That'd be a great place to start. Or you can start way down there at the bottom, whatever you feel comfortable with doing. Because again, that first time feeling is a special feeling. <laughs> there's a pucker factor. Yeah. Good. When, you know, when there it's is. like, wow, I just created this thing and, you know, primers go bang and there's gunpowder in there. It's yeah. Like, there's yeah. 60,000 pounds of pressure, depending on the cartridge might, might be happening. Uh, but, I, but I will say absolutely start low, always work up, never go lower than the starting charge listed in the manual. Yeah. That's almost that can be as, bad, as yeah. important as absolutely going being too low could end up with a squib. Yeah. Well, and, and yeah. So like you said, you could have not enough pressure generated to get the bullet to exit the barrel now that's a big problem and then conversely this happens uh kind of a double burn effect in some rifle cartridges typically it happens with a really small bore diameter let's say 243 uh and a really slow propellant say 4831 or h1000 or something like that and if you don't have enough powder in there um the the change in uh, volume happens so rapidly but the powder isn't burning fast enough to keep up with it that the pressure will drop off. And then when the bullet hits the rifling, pressure goes real high, real fast. So yeah. definitely don't go below recommended minimums yeah. and then stay within that recommended Right, maximum. And like I said, what we posted in that handbook, they're safe. From, from the low to the high, those are safe charges. You're, you're not going to go wrong going anywhere in there. Yep. I know there's a lot of powder choices for the particular bullet weight that you have. Don't let it scare you. A lot of times that front page where we talked about where it's got the cartridge overall length and our trim length it tells us what worked best for us yep, yep. it'll tell us what bullet works best with this powder start with that powder yep. you might have to start with a powder that you have that's on the list yeah or well, you might have to go get some powder. getting powder and primers right now we know that's a problem and all three of us we all work here and we all reload on our own and we all buy our own powder and we all buy in our own primers and it's it's tough out there we understand that so um so one thing i also wanted to add uh, if you're getting a little bit more confident as you go along and you've you've shot your rounds that you've hand loaded uh, and you want a little bit more performance you're on the internet forums and you're seeing what other people are using and you know people are like oh you know those just the max charge and the books you know those are those are light those are always light you can go above that we've seen and you're kind of in charge of yeah. this handbook right. and we've seen how they're done these are max charges. Yeah, we, we no, don't have no joke here. Like I have often on the internet forums, you hear uh, lawyer loads or that we safety hit, factors. We hit maximum and yeah. reduce it by five percent. No, no, we hit maximum and then we publish that charge. It's yeah, with our barrel, you know, chamber, everything combination. That is our max load, and that's what we feel yeah. safe. There's no reason you should test it. For all you know, the guy that you read that from the on best the load is this is sitting in his grandma's basement doesn't even load yeah. well laughing yeah putting for, some charge out there for you know brass out there these days and these custom actions oh yeah they may not show pressure nope. signs that are actually there you might be at seventy thousand pounds and you're not seeing anything yet all of a sudden you get up to 72 and like holy crap now the bolt doesn't open oh, great <laughs> there's you no know, gray so. area yeah and don't let it scare you as a beginning reloader those loads in there are safe when he's talking about pressure signs he's talking about being able to read the primers, the way they look, um, the brass, the way the, the, the they way the eject scratch. There's a ton of ways to see that. I wouldn't let that scare you at the start. So, you know, you can learn those things as you go. But if you stay within those safe loads and your mm -hmm. gun is set up for that particular chamber, it's the Sammy spec. You're you going to be just fine. You'll be yep. just fine. So as far as the powder dispensing goes, we talked a lot about it, you know, going through the tools. A couple different ways here with the kit. 
the the in my progression, the easiest thing to do for the new loader, set your powder measure up, dispense powder into the pan, weigh it volumetrically. Okay, that's the weight I'm going for. Now I'll throw 10 of them in a row and see, is it consistently where I want it? And then you can take your cartridge case, made it right up to the powder measure, charge the handle, and, and you've got a charged cartridge case. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, another way to do it would be to dispense every charge into the pan, weigh it. If you like it, you know, pour it into your cartridge case with the funnel. If you don't like it, either uh, you could trickle powder right onto the scale and, and slowly walk that right up to where you exactly want it. Uh, that's another way to do it. Absolutely. Uh, and, and it may depend, the way you do it might not only depend on your preference, it might depend on the powder. Sure. There are some extruded powders that, that you might not feel confident are giving you a volumetric charge that's good enough. Yep, the stick you know, powders. The stick powders, like because as lead. you rotate that, it has to break those grains or that it's got to get out of the way so it can create the volume. Mm -hmm. um, so you may want to trickle those every time and you might purposely throw it short. Throw a grain short. And Throw a grain short up. and always trickle up to it. Um, whereas if you're using a ball powder or, or if you have a flake powder for a, for a pistol, you know, it meters very well and you don't even really, like you said, you check 10 on your pen, you don't need it. So yep. the type of powder that, that you're using could determine how you want to do that powder. Right. And for the, for the, the new reloader out there, what to expect from a, a, a volumetric rotary style powder measure with good, those good i appreciate you bringing this up that's awesome the the, the volume uh with a ball powder which are almost all pistol powders or flake powder which are some pistol powders and then there are rifle powders that are ball powders as well yep so if you're using a spherical propellant it will be accurate as long as you're consistent with your throws within a tenth of a grain every single time oh, every time plus and minus one tenth of a grain should be expected uh when you're consistent with a ball powder now when you go to an extruded powder Depending on the size, of it, basically think of a piece of pencil lead, mechanical pencil lead, and then chop that up into little sticks. The size of those little sticks of pencil lead, if you will, uh, will dictate the total spread. Now, with something with a small extruded yeah, cut and size. they vary. Yeah. Wildly. Like, Bench, benchmark, IMR, yeah. 8208XBR, small. Extruded. Yeah, so that was where I was going. So if you got Benchmark or 8208XBR, super small granule size. Those will meter usually within plus or minus two tenths of a grain. So for a total yep. of about four tenths of a grain, you get into some much larger cut sizes like anything from the IMR line or the IMR and Duron line, really big kernel size, and their kernels vary in size, not just in diameter, but also in length. Um, those are going to walk a little bit more on you. You might actually end up with three tenths of a grain plus or minus for mm -hmm. a total of six tenths of variance. And... I wouldn't be overly concerned, especially as you're getting started, especially, you know, if you're into the, the, the hunting aspect of it. If you're reloading for precision, that's where you'd want to throw short and then trickle up. If it really bothers you, some powders are available standard, and then some of them will have the same number with SC. Yeah, short cut. Short cut extruded. Still yeah. should have the same burn rate, but, you know, don't, don't just go wait for weight with that. Unless the manufacturer tells you to do, you know, yeah. start over with your load, but a shortcut will met, meter, excuse me, meter easily. Yeah. Some examples of that IMR, or excuse me, H4831 yep. as a, as a standard and a shortcut. And then yep. IMR7828 has, has, you have the original and yep. the super shortcut. Yep. Um, so Correct. as far as that process goes, the loading tray that we talked about when we talked about tools, that is just going to be super handy here. You can get your primed case. It's all clean trimmed everything's good get the powder in there now you've got a safe place to hold that case where it can't tip over and spill your powder out you can load 50 in a row nice and consistent yep uh, that load tray comes in clutch right there so at this point in your load tray so you've got 50 brass beauties lined up they're clean they're primed they're sized properly uh if it's a pistol case it's got a flare the powder's in there the next step the here, bird. the bird, yep. So the next step in this process then is bullet seating. You've picked out your bullet, you've got to get it into the cartridge case and you got to get it set at the right length. Absolutely. And much like that sizing die, ton of YouTube videos out there on yep. how to properly set up a seating die in the instructions that are included with your reloading dies. Yep. Another, another great resource. If you've 
really are having some hangups, hitting some snags in any die setup or anything for that matter, our tech department can walk you through this. Just a couple minutes on the phone, they'll have that thing set up and running for you. Yep, and the proper length to seat them to is, again, to your Bible. You're going to refer to that book a lot. Yep. I call it the Bible, but into your reloading handbook will be, for the particular bullets, um, it'll give you the, the load length, where right. you want the cartridge overall length, the C-O-L, and that's the a distance from the base of the case to the tip of the bullet. Uh, that's the goal you're shooting for when setting up your seating die. Right. So the seating die, um, it's just an incremental step. You start off, I like to run a bullet and cartridge up into the die, uh, and I won't get into the die setup here, and then I'll thread that seating stem down until it touches the bullet, lift the handle, thread it down like a full turn, and that'll start my seating process, and then you just incrementally work that down until you get it exactly where you want it, always you know, referring to your length, measuring it with your calipers. If it's got a cantaloupe, that's a great place to start. Yep. Lay that case mouth right in the cantaloupe. Um, usually you won't have problems Can't do doing wrong that. there. Yep. Yep. So, uh, getting into crimp. Now we, we talked a lot about it early, but we'll get into it a little bit more here. Um, because for a roll style crimp, where like you said, it physically rolls that case mouth that's done in the seating operation. Yeah. And your so seating die does that. Set both simultaneously. So when you're, when you're done with that length, the crimp is already there. Yep. And that crimp, we talked about it, but for auto-loading guns, a crimp is, is a really good idea. For lever-action guns, for revolver cartridges, uh, those three things, revolvers, uh, auto-loaders, um, anything with heavy recoil is a good idea. Um, and the reason you, we're saying that is you don't want the bullet to move. Right. The projectile needs to stay in position. If it goes in or out, it can change your volume, your extreme spread, pressures, it affects it affects everything. Yeah. So you want to hold it, not to mention an auto feeder where that bullet's got to hit that ramp and go up into battery. Yep. Um, you just want them to stay put. Right. Do you need crimp always? No. No. That's the big one. No. I, I put as much crimp as I need, and that's basic. I, if I can skip the crimping operation, I do. Because, and this might not be basic, the, the brass is like anything, a coat hanger. The more you move it, the the quicker it is wears out. bad yeah. yeah so if i can move it less by have not to crimp it That's i can make point. my brass last long so but, what are some instances where you don't need crimp well single shot rifles for sure single shot rifles even bolt action bolt rifles. action repeaters bolt I, action I, repeaters I if you have enough brass neck tension mm -hmm. you know you have a particular brass that's hard and you can test for it load five of them stick them into your rifle you know put them down in fire one pull the others out and measure them again mm -hmm. yep did they move? Chamber one, pull it out, measure it. Did it move when I chambered it? You can test for that. Yeah. And for the most part, you know, if you're an entry-level reloader, you buy a 6.5 Creedmoor die set, you've got your 6.5 Creedmoor spent brass, you clean it, you size it. You don't even have to worry about neck tension at this point. Yep. Our factory sizing dies are going to squeeze that neck down to give uh, enough tension to hold that bullet in place. And if yep. you're reloading for a single shot or a bolt-action rifle... Um, you really don't need them. Now on a bolt action rifle where you'd want them, you know, maybe you're going on uh, you know, a backcountry hunt, dangerous game, something like that, where you simply just cannot afford to have something go wrong. You might want to yeah, put a crimp yeah. in there. Or you've got a super heavy magnum with a very heavy bullet. It's important. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned the, the, the pressure things with, you know, bullet coming in and out. Uh, in a revolver or uh, a lever action style gun, if that bullet starts to move on you, you can lock the gun up, yep. you know, lock yep. your cylinder up. Yep. Yep. And uh, that's a problem. So yep. again, you don't always need one. Um, but for instances where you've got the auto loader, a uh, lever action, revolver, maybe a heavy mag, heavy recoiling magnum, that's a good time to put in a, a crimp. And if you're reloading for pistols that are auto loading, that taper style crimp. Yep. A uh, separate die. Separate die. We do make a set of dies that does the taper crimp and the bullet seating in one step to save yep. you a process, um, and that's out there. We won't get too much into it on this podcast, but that is an option. I will yeah. throw, just maybe just throw out here um, cartridges that are, we're talking about right here, 380 auto, 9 millimeter, 40, 40 10, 10 millimeter, 45 uh, auto. Uh, yeah. Those are your basic ones that most folks are going to load for that you're going to want a taper crimp. Yep. 
450 Bushmaster, the new 350 Legend. Yep. Those are some rifle cartridges yep. that you'll probably need the crimp. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, there's some advanced stuff where you might want to do both styles of crimp, but we won't get into that because that's, uh, you know, if you're if you're reloading for cartridges that need a taper and a roll crimp, this is probably not your you're first. You're probably not starting out. Yeah, you probably not yeah. start on the yeah. 454 Casul or 460. Or if something. you're one of those guys, you probably tuned out of this podcast a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think this was great to, to just cover some ground on how simple reloading really can be i know we, we talked for an simple. hour here about the processes and the tools and it might still seem daunting but but trust me folks it's not this no, is not that it's much literally it's literally as simple as taking your fired case cleaning it getting that primer back out of it okay getting the primer back into it sizing it getting it down where it's got to be put some powder in it get a bullet on it and you've reloaded a piece yep. of ammo. All these tools and other things we talked about are just simple ways to get you to that process. You know, back in the old days, they had little hammer pound yeah. dies. They didn't have a press. You took your case and you pounded a die over it, and then you used a bar to pound that piece of brass back out. You got your primer seated in the bottom of there. You put your powder in there and your bullet, and you tapped a handle to put your bullet back in there, and you We've reloaded. come a long way. Absolutely. So yep. if you have a set of dies, by golly, like that, and you want to use them, use them. Yep. You know, but reloading is not, I know we make it sound difficult because the more we learn and the more we play around and, and maybe we're the wrong guys to do this podcast because <laughs> we've done it for a long time because we, we just don't want to scare you from reloading. It's, it's a very simple process. It can be gratifying. Very. You, you pull the trigger on something you made. You had total control into what it went into that. You're not trusting a manufacturer. Um. You might realize some accuracy. Well, let's talk about, for me, the main one lately is like a few years ago, you couldn't find yeah, ammo. Absolutely. I mean, we're making more ammo than we ever have. By a long time. folks still couldn't find it. That's right. If you were able to have powder and primers and bullets were okay to come by mm -hmm. and you kept your brass, you could go out and shoot. Absolutely. Yeah. Or for me, you know, now I'm thinking more along the lines of I've got grandkids now and even though he's grayer than I am, I do have grandchildren. Better and, looking though, too. <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps a factory load is a little bit too much recoil for him. So I'm going to come up down. with a great load to be able to tame it down. I have total control in that process. And I feel good when they're laying behind a weapon to fire it, that I've made it. It's safe. I've yep. tamed it down. They're going to be happy with it. Yep. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, uh, you know, I got into it more out of, I don't know, it was, I was just around it. I was immersed in it, if you will. So kind of got yeah. into it that way. And then, yeah, then you start getting different guns and then you start shooting competitively or you start shooting stuff far away or whatever. You can just absolutely make it perfect. And then there's the satisfaction part, like you talked about, Ben. You know, I think there's probably women that'll listen to this and, and women that reload, certainly. Um, speaking for me, though, as a guy, I feel like a lot of us have that, like, I don't know. I like to build things. And I, I'm Preston, I, I know a lot of people like to build things because it's, it's very gratifying and building little pieces of furniture. Is that Tim Allen effect? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or building, you know, building a, a deck on your house or building whatever. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, I built that. There's some, some gratification there. And then you get to buy more tools. And that's what's. what's Everybody likes to buy tools, yeah, right? Yeah. That's the Tim Allen effect. That's right. Yeah. These are not Benford, though. No, these are not been for tools, <laughs> but yeah, for, for some basic tools, one thing I wanted to mention before we wrap this up, and you know, I've spent some time on the phone up in tech years ago, and one of the things that uh, came up relatively often for somebody that was getting into reloading was, if I buy these entry-level tools, you know, what's it going to be like when I, when I want to upgrade something? And I'll tell you right now, by and large, any of these quote-unquote entry-level tools, you will not be sorry that you have them. They will have value. For your entire loading career. Absolutely. Like, Even if these you wanted to upgrade to a progressive press, and that's a press that does all these things we talked about in one pull of the handle, um, you're still going to rely on your single stage to set a load up before you take that yep. load to a progressive press. And you're still going to use your, your, your chamfer de bird. Absolutely. You're still going to end up using a funnel, a trickler. Absolutely. The load tray, a lot of this yep. stuff you're going to end up using for your entire reloading career. For so, sure. Uh, it really is an investment and a worthwhile investment. Absolutely. 
Yep. Absolutely. And we talked about this kit. There is another kit. If you want to kind of get started on those up things, you can do it. We didn't talk about them yep. and you won't need them. You won't need them other than maybe the calipers uh, for, for some time until you're more comfortable with the basics. That's yep. why we brought this kit for the basic kit. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, uh, lot of opportunity for those uh, new reloaders out there. Like you mentioned, Preston, ammo, hard to find. Some people forced into reloading. Some people get into it for, for just the pure enjoyment of it or for to have that, that control on precision. And uh, there's really not a wrong answer here. Just get into it. Don't be uh, scared to just jump in because it is a absolutely awesome hobby. Yep. Yeah, if, you're, if your holdback is being scared, get the book, read it get to understand it talk to our tech guys they can tell you how simple it is yeah you and i both just did tech it. for for years mm -hmm. yeah. like, i even helped out a little yeah, bit in the times when we were busy yeah, beginning reloading calls were honestly some of my favorite ones absolutely you know? because you get you know that you were able to help somebody get yeah. started in something that you have a passion for mm -hmm. yep yep and a passion is like we started the podcast passion really is the right word for it because yeah. it can quickly become well, it'll become anything you make it. If it's something you hate doing because I, I have to do this because I have a match coming up, well, then that's how it's going to feel. But if you enjoy the process, immerse yourself mm -hmm. in it, it really will become a passion. Absolutely. Yep. Great, guys. Well, I think this probably sums up, you know, that, that start to finish introduction to if you're wanting to get into reloading, you know, here's your options. And, you know, for the entry-level reloader, any reloader for that matter, now is an amazing time because of that get loaded promotion. Oh yeah! You buy the products, you get the free bullets. What's oh, what's better than free bullets? That. I believe the reloading kit doesn't that come with? Yeah, five hundred free bullets. Mm -hmm. You got a choice of calipers that you get to pick from. I think all you pay is shipping and handling, right? That's it. Yep. So depending on what you buy, every die set gets you a hundred free bullets. Yep. Um, great time to get into the sport if you get set up. Uh, depending on what tools you choose, you can end up with you know, a few hundred, maybe a few thousand bullets, depending on what all you go hog wild and buy. But yeah. that get loaded promotion right now going on, um, I don't know when it's going to end, but uh, it's it's a, a great thing to take advantage of to get you uh, incentivized into getting into the sport. Yep. That's right. Awesome, guys. Well, uh, if you don't need anything else, bending our listeners ear, we'll wrap this one up. I Anything. think we're good, huh, Preston? I'm tired of listening to Ben. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, for the viewers, we should probably do a poll. Drop some comments below. Do you think Preston's gray is uh, more than Ben's gray? Oh, I guarantee that. We could right do now. beauty contests, which one's better looking. And let's after, not even talk about hair, folks. Okay. Well, that's not much of it. <laughs> Who's got the best hair? Oh, uh, my God. This is Devolver. Editor, oh, note, wow. please cut okay. this out. No, oh, uh, on a serious note. Yes. After after listening to this podcast, the listeners, the viewers, drop us a comment. Let us know if you think Preston's way or Ben's way is the right way. Oh, I, That's do, it. Awesome. I do it both ways, though. <laughs> yeah, he I know. I just, and I do too. Primers out of a case. <laughs> I just like to I hear do it you both guys. Ways. I just like to hear you guys battle. Oh, well, well, Ben talks an absolute sometimes. Yeah, and I have to set him straight. You oh, know, God. Well, <laughs> there's multiple ways to. I have to cat. admit that's probably the engineer in me. That's the that's the dirty, tactic guy. There's the right way. There, and then there's Preston's way. <laughs> and then there's Ben's way. <laughs> With that. All right, yes. Uh, hope Seriously, you. folks, though, if you ever have any questions, again, like Preston said, 800-338-3220, uh, option number three, you can talk to our text. Find group of folks that will be able to talk you through anything. Yep. yep, right on. Appreciate it. Well, guys, hopefully you found this one interesting. If you haven't already, don't hesitate. Jump into the sport of reloading. I call it a sport because, man, you can spend some money, you can spend some time, you can spend some uh, effort into getting into it and enjoying it. And for what it is, I can't recommend it enough. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one.